suppose we have the function f that satisfies the recurrence formula f of n plus one equals two times f of n plus three. Note that this is not enough information to define the function since we don't have an initial condition. For each of the initial conditions below, find the value of f of four. To determine the value of f of four, we first have to determine f of one, f of two, and f of three. First, we are given the initial condition f of zero equals zero. Because we are given f of zero, we can now determine f of one. Where for f of one, notice n is equal to zero, since f of the quantity zero plus one is f of one, which is equal to two times f of zero, since n is equal to zero, plus three. If we are given f of zero is equal to zero, and therefore f of one is equal to two times zero plus three, which is equal to three. So now we know f of one is equal to three. We can determine f of two. For f of two, notice n is equal to one, since f of the quantity one plus one is f of two, which is equal to two times f of one, again, because n is equal to one, plus three. We now know f of one is equal to three, which gives us two times three plus three, which is six plus three, which is equal to nine. We now know f of two is equal to nine. Now that we know f of two, we can determine f of three, where for f of three, notice n is equal to two, since f of the quantity two plus one is f of three, which is equal to two times f of two plus three. Two times f of two plus three is two times nine plus three, which is 18 plus three, which is 21. We now know f of three is equal to 21. And now finally we can determine f of four. So notice the drawback for a recursive function is that we have to have the previous function values or images of previous elements from the domain to determine function values. So to determine f of four, Notice n is equal to three since f of the quantity three plus one is f of four, which is equal to two times f of three plus three. And again, f of three is equal to 21, giving us two times 21 plus three, which is 42 plus three, which equals 45. And finally, we now know that f of four is equal to 45. And now we're asked to go through the same process where now f of zero is equal to three. Starting over again, for f of one, n is equal to zero, since f of zero plus one is f of one, which is equal to two times f of zero plus three, which is equal to two times three plus three, which is equal to six plus three or nine. We now know f of one is equal to nine. Well, since we're using the same recursive formula, and since f of one is equal to nine, and from the previous problem, f of two is equal to nine, and therefore in our case, now f of two should be equal to 21, f of three should be equal to 45, and so on, but we'll go ahead and go through the same process. For f of two, n is equal to one, since f of one plus one is f of two, which gives us two times f of one plus three, which is two times nine plus three, which is equal to 21. F of two is equal to 21. For F of three, N is equal to two, since F of the quantity two plus one is F of three, which gives us two times F of two plus three, which is equal to two times 21 plus three, which you know is equal to 45. F of three is equal to 45. Now that we know f of three, we can determine f of four. For f of four, notice n is equal to three, since f of three plus one is equal to f of four, which is equal to two times f of three plus three, which is two times 45 plus three. Two times 45 is 90, 90 plus three is 93. When the initial condition is f of zero equals three, f of four, is equal to 93. I hope you found this helpful.